Let's do a quick review of the stock market with the help of our global macro research and consulting firm, MacroOps. Now, if you remember in last week's review, we were talking about the crucial level that the market was resting on, which was right around here. And we said, if it breaks that level, then look out below, but most likely it was gonna rebound. And sure enough, it rebounded. You can look at this wick right here. It went to lows and then turned around and that's a bullish sign. Next day, what happened? The thing rocketed up and it's been going higher ever since. And now look at us, we're breaking out to new highs. So what is going on? So what happened is that large swaths of this market have gone through a stealth bear market. What's that mean? Well, many of the popular growth names were actually bulldozed while the indices kept going higher. And the reason the indices like the S&P 500 kept going higher is because they are largely weighted to the mega caps. So we talked about last week how a few stocks like Apple were keeping everything afloat. And the reason that happens is because those are the cash sweep vehicles for every new dollar added to the ETF heavy portfolios, which are most portfolios. Most people are investing in ETFs like SPOT. And even if you go into a mutual fund, they invest, you know, into SPY again for you. So most dollars are going into those big stocks and the bigger ones just keep getting bigger. And that's why the market was able to stay afloat. So even though things looked a little rough these last few weeks, I mean, look at the overall trend, right? Straight up. So if we look at the NASDAQ, it just came 7% off its all-time highs before rebounding. And this is most likely short-term bullish because now what we're seeing is those beaten down names are finally reverting upwards. So they went through their bear market, they got beaten down, and now they're going back up with the apples and the other big stocks. So this is giving a tailwind to breath and the overall market. And you know we love to look at breath, right? Because you want all stocks moving together. That's the healthiest market and that's about to happen. You can see here one of the ways we track it with breath is the new highs versus the new lows in the NASDAQ. And you can see we hit one of the largest levels compared to the other times we got bottoms, but we were only 7% off the highs. So new highs versus new lows being so low like this means there's a lot less stocks going up versus going down. So you've seen that kind of hit a low level in each bottom, but the other times we were down a lot more in the market, off 20%, 18, 23, 32, this time only seven. And I get emails all the time asking like, hey, why don't you just buy the dip? Just always buy the dip. Well, yeah, that has been working for a few years now, but the problem is when it stops working. And when you're buying the dip, you're literally doing the opposite of what good risk control is. And good risk control is the only thing that wins out long-term in the stock market. But here's the problem. I mean, <laughs> if you keep buying the dip and it keeps working, you're gonna learn a bad habit, right? And that's what the entire market has learned over the last few years. So when the market actually does turn around and when it actually does break that level and keep going down, you're going to have people buying the dip and getting absolutely massacred as the market keeps heading down. And they're going to wonder why, because buying the dip has worked for so long. But no, if you really look on a really long time scale, buying the dip doesn't work because it's just bad risk control. And I'm talking about buying the dip in the most simple way. Just literally every time the market goes down, you buy. No strategy, no rhyme, no reason. Not a good look long term. So the Russell 3000 is just off its high, but the percentage of stocks above the 50 day moving average is coming off deeply oversold levels that typically marks bottoms. This is bullish. Same sort of thing we we're just talking about with the breadth, right? So we had a lot of stocks below their 50 day moving average and now it's rebounding. So the breadth is getting better. You can see even the Russell here, it was looking like it was gonna break that level in the last video and it rebounded. So it's still within its range. Now some traders would have actually bought right here because they just buy here and then sell when it hits the top of the range and then short when it's at the top of the range and ride it back down and buy again. Those are are mean reversion traders versus trend traders who would wait for it to break above this level. So two different ways to play the market, both are successful. So again, this is bullish, the path of least resistance is up. Now what could kill this juggernaut of a rally? Well, inflation could, or at least the belief that inflation will stay well above current expectations. So we gotta keep watching how the market is reacting to inflation. Now we have some proprietary indicators at MacroOps and what they've been showing us is that oil, home builders, semiconductors, and the NASDAQ have the best projected 20 day returns out of all the markets analyzed. And this is analyzed within the current market regime that we're seeing. So if you want to keep your eye on a few sectors, those are the ones. Speaking of semiconductors, Micron is back near all-time highs and their ticker symbol is MU. So we've been bullish Micron for a long time. And if you know about the hyperneural squeeze, you know why. But Micron itself spent most of the year in a corrective mode following its large bull run in the second half of 20. Bearish sentiment hit ridiculous extreme levels over the last few months, helping to cement the bottom on this move. And if you look at this monthly chart, you see how it's pretty much an accelerating parabolic trend, and that's because of DRAM pricing. Again, some of you know about this. Now the next measured move target is $124 per share, and Micron will likely get there quite fast, which is great for the deep out of the money calls that we have right now. And you can see right here, Micron is just taking off. Huge rebound there. Definitely one to keep on your watch list. Here's another one you could put on your watch list, BioX. And BioX has traded sideways in a tight and healthy consolidation for the last six months or so. But now it's teeing off its 200 day moving average, which is this blue line right here. 
and it looks geared up for another big run higher. Another agricultural one to put on your list is Potash IPI or Intrepid Potash. That's the full name of the company. So this is a potash producer slash a stealth oil play because it has big water rights. So this is looking for another leg up as it's breaking out from a multi-month coiling wedge. You can see the nice little breakout right here out of this consolidation. From a valuation perspective, it is very cheap and we're expecting some really high growth. So we'll be adding to our position in the macro ops portfolio this week. So that's it for this week. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up for macro ops, get on our free mailing list, and I will see you next week.